Hi everyone, I am doing an update for you on my products to use up as of June, no it's July, right? July 2015. So I did a video in January and that's when I kind of started my list of things to use up. And this video is just going to be an update basically on those products. I'm not going to add anything in new because I haven't made a significant dent in the things that I've used up. So I'm just going to hopefully go through with some additional information now that I have been trying to use them more and let you know which ones I actually finished and which ones I may be bailing out on completely or how I'm feeling about them now that I'm using them more. So I think I'll try to go in order of what I did originally. So I have the original video description up here, thank goodness, otherwise I'd have to go watch the video myself. <laughs> So the first thing I mentioned was the Lorac Wet Dry Powder um, in WD-1. So this one, I reached this state a long time ago. And I was trying to use this initially, but it quickly got put back into my drawer of powders because I was just having a hard time picking a product with a brush. Even using like a super dense brush, I was using the Sephora Airbrush 56 maybe it's I think a foundation brush but it's quite small and it's very dense I was just having a really hard time picking up product and I think I'm just gonna have to toss this guy because it is old and I think that the powder itself is not in the best shape so that one's going off the list uh, let's see next is Paula's Choice Sheer Matte Tint SPF 30 in level 1 fair light so this is the product. I did finish that tube that I had originally mentioned in the video. I bought this before I had really accepted that this is too dark for me. So if you're around NC 15 to 20 perhaps, I think this would work well, but for my NC 5 to 10, it's just too dark. I have to then either take it down on my neck or use a different color product on my neck to get things to kind of even out. It is extremely easy to apply. I will link the video where I use it, just so if you are curious, you can see. And I cannot apply any other color product as easily as this one does. I can just kind of rub it on like a moisturizer. Um, so I do love it for that. So it is a quick way for me to get SPF 30 because I use a lot of it. Um, and it's fairly sheer, so it's not going to look too crazy. But it's going to be harder to finish that tube just because I know that it's not the best match for me. If I got super brave and decided to start doing some self tanning, maybe I could do it. But the idea of like self tanning everywhere totally freaks me out. Like I feel like my legs, since they're much paler than the rest of me, they're very kind of strange bluish white shade that doing just my legs is I can deal with that, but everywhere else, and then I've got to get the face looking right and everything. No. Anyway, that's a whole different issue. Uh, let's see, the next is the NARS Light Reflecting Setting Powder Pressed and Translucent Crystal. It probably looks the same as it did last time. Um, I do use this to set the concealer I'm going to mention here under my eyes. Sometimes I will use this to set my foundation all over. I don't really find that it makes it last longer. I've never really found anything that ever makes anything last longer. Mm -hmm. um, but it does add a little bit more of a glowy finish as opposed to the other powder that I'm going to mention, which is a lot more matte. So I'm going to continue chipping away at that one. I really do like it for setting under my eyes the concealer, but I had I did buy the Sonia Kashuk Chic Luminosity Powder, and as far as I can tell, they're a dupe. They work the exact same way for setting my concealer under my eyes. They have the same finish, same everything as far as I can tell, and that is a lot cheaper, and those occasionally you will get a good Sonia Kashuk coupon at Target, so that's nice. Uh, let's see what's next. I'm like sweating. I've got the fan on, so if it's a little breezy. Um, so this futon had been in bed mode for quite a while since my brother visited quite a while ago. And um, in February. <laughs> and I'd been like kind of cramming myself into this weird little corner sitting on the bed 
so that I wouldn't have the ugly wall situation anywhere in the background because it's it's bad. I'm not going to get into it. <sighs> Wallpaper trim that's half off, etc. Um, but that was really uncomfortable and I was tired of, I wanted to be able to sit in something with a back to support my back a little. So recording this videos would be a little bit more comfortable. Um, so I brought a chair over, but then it's like I had to be so close in order to not get any of the wall in the background. So I'm like, to heck with it. So I put it back in futon mode. Um, but that involved like taking off the memory foam topper and the sheets and the blanket and um, then wrestling the cover back on and rearranging all the stuff, the light, the tripod, the little chair that I had gotten out. So I'm sweating. <laughs> so I should be extra glowy. Um, next is, is this actually next? I have it out like it's going to be next, but I'm not sure. Um, let's see. No, it's not. <laughs> The concealer I'm talking about, the CoverGirl Plus Olay, the Depuffer eye concealer, and this is in Fair. So as you can see, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting pretty low on it. I have gone through a phase um, of not using a lot of makeup. For about a month, I was very rarely ma wearing makeup. Um, the morning sickness from this pregnancy really super put me off to makeup, so I wasn't just sitting down at my vanity was making me queasy, so I really did not wear makeup much at all during that time. So, and when I have been, I've been kind of lazy, like using foundation under my eyes instead of my concealer. So that's why these two things definitely have been used a lot less than they had been. But I am using this more, and I would say that I have maybe a fifth or less left so I am definitely getting down to the bottom but I think I still have a good amount kind of in this little area um, I do have another one of these because I had a really good coupon for it and I also have the Tarte Maracuja creaseless concealer in fair maybe I'm not sure whatever the lightest shade is I think but that one is very light and it's almost too light so um, I think it will be okay when I'm wearing the NARS Siberia uh, Sheer Glow just because that actually matches my skin. But if I'm not wearing foundation or, or a foundation that has, that lightens the skin on my face more to match my neck, it can be a little bit too much of a contrast, a little too brightening. I don't really like a very bright concealer under my eyes. Um, I feel like it just, it doesn't quite look right on my face. So. I'm not sure if I'm going to start using the other concealer of this, the other one I have, the other tube, or if I'm going to start working on that Tarte one more often. We'll see. I'll see how it looks with the um, Sheer Glow and go from there. Totally extra not important information. Um, this is why all my videos are so long. I'm sorry. Hourglass Mineral Veil, and that was a deluxe sample. I did mention this in an empties along with that um, Paula's Choice Sheer Matte Dint. <laughs> um, so I like that well enough to actually buy the travel size. So I was using that under powder foundations, and I felt like it was definitely helping the foundation last. What I have since discovered is that it does not with my skin, it does not sit well um, under a liquid foundation. I haven't had much luck wearing it under the Sheer Glow or the, L it does really weird things under the L'Oreal True Match uh, foundation, which is the other one that matches me quite well, but has less lasting power. Um, and actually I should try that one with other primers because I have like primers coming out my nose, which is ridiculous because I just don't use them very often. But since I've always had, um, the oil on my T-zone breaks down makeup within like four to five hours. I've always, you know, want to try something to see if this is going to be the magic product that actually works. And it never is. So I have a lot. Um, why I haven't taken like half of those back, I don't know. Plus you get a lot of like deluxe samples and stuff of primers. So yeah, anyway. Um, where was I going with this? So since I've been wearing the liquid foundation a lot more, I haven't actually been wearing the Mineral Veil. Um, I do like that it has SPF in it. Not a ton, but it has some. You know, it's most likely you're wearing SPF anyway, so you're just adding a little bit more, so that's nice. And um, 
yeah, I do like how it works under powders. But I, again, I have to ha be careful like around my chin because sometimes it's like the product kind of wears away and it's almost like the um, oils in my pores, not even oil, like the sebum, you know, the gross cloggy stuff, will start coming to the surface and it will look like I have all these weird little dots, but it's not from the color product. It's highly unpleasant. So that's what happens when I wear that with like some of the liquids. So yeah, I'll try it again under the sheer glow and see if that happens. See if I can wear it, you know, elsewhere. But anyway, I did finish up that deluxe sample. Oh, gracious. Next up is the Benefit Powder Flage. And this is this cute little thing. It's so funny. Whenever my son sees this, he's almost two. Um, he sees it in the little drawer in my vanity and he always wants to grab it because he loves balls and it's like a little tiny ball. But I don't think this would handle being thrown too well. I have a feeling it would explode and well, at least it would be finished, right? <laughs> yeah. So what I've been using this for is setting my makeup in the T-zone. I believe in my NARS Sheer Glow um, demo review video that I just uploaded, I think I use this to set my T-zone. I don't know how, much, how well it works, but I, I remember having a good experience like once. So now I have in my mind that it does work for that. So I'm kind of slowly but surely making my way through it. It's so hard to tell how much is in here because the, the, the shape of this really distorts the, um, the view of the product. So it looks like there's a ton, but I know it can't be that much. So slowly chipping away at that, but I just don't, I don't set my foundation consistently just because I don't have a lot of faith that it's actually working. Benefit Girl Meets Pearl Deluxe Sample. I started off well with this, wearing it basically every day, but it started kind of wearing me down. There's something about adding like liquid or cream products on top of foundation. I was just having a hard time with it not looking too, like the shimmer in this is visible for sure. Cause I mean, I can definitely see the sparkle. Um, it's fine, but you can, it's, <laughs> Um, even just in my makeup mirror when it's not magnified. I never use the magnification in a makeup mirror. Must be one of the few. I, it hurts my head to look at magnification. So, um, so yeah, I stopped using it. Today I wore it underneath my foundation and I think that worked out pretty well. So I think I'll try possibly to start doing that. It doesn't have a ton of color, but it does add warmth for sure. And today I just put it like all over my cheeks. Now, granted, I have sweat and <laughs> happening and also the Dior, whatever the heck, Amber Diamond uh, highlighter. So, I mean, like all that glow is basically from Amber Diamond. And um, I'm not really sure how this looked. I think once I put the foundation over it, you couldn't really see it, but I'll have to continue. I, I, you know, if it doesn't matter, maybe I'll just stick it under there anyway, just so I'll finish it. I'm really having kind of struggling with this desire to finish things up versus I don't like it. So just get rid of it. Why am I wasting my time forcing myself to use it? Yeah, I'm really struggling with this. So we'll see. Next up is, um, this is gonna take forever. Too Faced Shadow Insurance Deluxe Sample. I am almost out of this. I'm really down to the last dregs. Um, this should be finished soon. It's my favorite. That and the Lorac, Lorac Behind the Scenes Eye Primer. Those are my two favorite. And that's what, I also mentioned that in that video thinking that by the time that I didn't update, I'd be done with this. But man, primers, I don't use a ton, so it just lasts for um, so I have not made any progress on that Lorac one, obviously. So Maybelline Master Drama Eyeliner in Midnight Master. I still have this and it's not finished. I was really forcing myself to use this um, and what I was using it for was tight lining. There's a variety of things that caused me to stop using this. Makes it a lot harder to take my makeup off at the end of the day because it does get in between the lashes and there will be a lot of it and so it just, it's, when I'm washing my face, a good amount will be left after, and that bugs me. Um, 
This also kind of irritates my eyes, so it makes my eyes water a little bit if I get any on the waterline. And when you're tight lining on that upper lash line, kind of underneath the lashes, it shouldn't get on your waterline, but inevitably, especially this kind of shape is going to. And lastly, it always transferred down to my lower waterline because I could never keep it off the upper waterline. So I think this, I'm still debating whether or not I'm just gonna toss this or reserve it to wear on my upper lash line. It's just I very rarely wear black liner on my lash line even though I have like a million black liners. So we'll see. I don't even know how much I have left of this because I don't think it twists down. I think it only goes up. Does it twist down? No, it doesn't. So I have no idea. I felt like I must be towards the end, but I really don't know. Okay, next one is actually a positive one. Not finished, but positive. The Studio Gear Professional Brow Definer in Medium Ash. This is the full name of this guy. So I have definitely used a fair amount of this and um, this is no longer available for at Ulta but they do sell it on their website. It's $14. I would say it's quite a good price and it does last a long time. The color I think is really nice. It's very cool toned. Um, and I do have it in my brows today along with another item that's on the list. and. Yeah, I really do. I would recommend this for sure. And I haven't been wearing it daily, but I do wear it fairly regularly. And it especially matches a little bit better with the cooler toned brows when they're dyed. Though when they're dyed, I can use a lot less brow products. So that does make finishing the brow stuff a little trickier just because when I'm dyeing them, then I don't really need a tinted brow gel in the same way and that kind of thing. But I am just slowly but surely making progress on that one. Um, and speaking of the Anastasia Tinted Brow Gel and Brunette, I still, there's still products like up to here, so, um, and I also have that in my brows today. It's very dark, it's very warm, and the way that the brush is, there's a lot of big gaps, so you tend to get a lot of product in your brows, so it's a tricky to control. I always have to go in and clean up after it's dried. Usually I need to brush through my brows after it's dried, which means the hold is not completely destroyed, but it's not there. And yeah, I don't enjoy using it, but I am trying to use it sometimes. I go back and forth. Sometimes I like it and at the moment it's just driving me crazy. The e.l.f. Wet Gloss Lash and Brow Clear Mascara, that one I finished and is also in an empties. I do like that one. I think it's $2 now instead of $1, and I still feel like it's a pretty good price. The hold isn't great, but you can use both sides for your brows, and it's certainly better than nothing. <laughs> the Benefit Posy Balm uh, Deluxe Sample. So this was like the most pathetic, pathetic sample ever. So basically what you got was barely over the edge of that plastic. But it turns out there's a ton more product inside. So I had finished what was, I had gotten down to the edge and I was like, well, let me Kristen, Kristen game it and start digging out the product and see how much is in there. There was so much more product in there than there was above the plastic part. So I did go ahead and dig it out and I've been using it periodically from this little pot so I'm still working on that but I was I do like the color I like the finish I really like how it looks on my lips but I don't like the smell and it does kind of dry them out so I like it but I I'm still on the fence I may buy it if I had a really good price on it maybe just because I like the way it looks so much last two I've made a little progress but not a whole lot this is the Rimmel Airy Fairy uh, lasting finish lipstick I it looks pretty much the same, I would say. Um, I like it, but I just don't often want this color and intensity of pink. I've used the L'Oreal Color Riche Ferris Nude more, so I'd say I've made a little progress, but it's still probably pretty similar to what it was in that video. Of the two, I like this lipstick a lot more. I like the color. It's um, very pigmented and very... It's not... It's almost thick. It's not heavy, I don't think, but you put one 
kind of swipe on and you have a good amount of lipstick on your lips and it's a nice formula. I don't like the smell. It does have that floral uh, smell that a lot of people also don't like. And yeah, so I'm still working on it, but I don't wear it super often. Excuse me. So that's it for my update on my products to use up of 2015. I'm making a little progress, but not a ton. Hopefully the next six months will be a little bit more progress than the previous six months. Um, I would like to blame it all on that month of the baby queasy morning sickness thing, but really that's no excuse. Some of these things I just don't like. <coughs> At the end of the year, I may decide that I'm just going to ditch some of them and um, just get them out of my life. If I really don't enjoy using them, why am I forcing myself to finish them? I'm okay with throwing some other things away, so sometimes I feel like I just need to accept it and throw it away. So I think that's everything. Let me know if you have any comments or questions about any of the products or what's going on. I would love to hear from you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a good holiday weekend if you are celebrating the 4th of July. And I'll see you soon.